Welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Jerry Parrish, and I'm here today with Julia Hess from the Harmony Hill Museum, which is in Claremont County and Williamsburg, Ohio. I understand that uh, Williamsburg was founded by a gentleman named William Lytle? Correct. He was the founder of Williamsburg and the father of Claremont County. He was born in 1770 in Pennsylvania, and when he was about 10 years old, he traveled with his family by flat boat down the Ohio River and settled in the area around Louisville, Kentucky. Uh -huh. At an early age, he worked with his father, who was also a William Lytle, Captain William Lytle, okay. as he surveyed the land that he had been granted for his service in the French and Indian Wars and the Revolutionary War. When so this was part of the Virginia Military District? It was. Uh -huh. And uh, when young William Lytle was about 25 years of age, he worked with Nathaniel Massey surveying the whole Virginia Military District. When Massey decided that Lytle was competent, he assigned him the western portion of the district and Massey took the eastern portion. Uh -huh. And they surveyed the area and Lytle came to this area with his brother John and with several other men who were, many of, of those were also Revolutionary War veterans. And they set up a, a surveying camp down along the east fork of the Little Miami River and Lytle decided this was such a beautiful area, he thought it was the perfect place to plan a town. So he did. <laughs> Just like that. Just Let's like that. Let's have a town here. <laughs> That's right. The 1,500 acre area known as the DeBenville Survey was this particular area. Uh -huh. And th they were working on surveying it in the, the winter of 1795, 1796 but the weather became so cold that they were not able to drive the surveying stakes into the ground. And so the work had to be uh, uh, brought to a halt until the spring thaw. My goodness. And at that point, a plat was drawn up and lots were being sold and cabins were being built and Lytle's town was about to be born. Uh huh. It was 1800 when Lytle actually acquired the 600 acres of land for his homestead, which he named Harmony Hill. Ah, that's where the name comes from. That's okay. where it comes from. And that same year of 1800, he employed John Charles to build his home, which was the first frame dwelling in the area. The home was constructed of lath and plaster and lined with brick as a preventative aid or protection from the Indian raids that were possible at that point in time. This was the first structure to have glass windows. Near the main house was a dairy house, which was the place where they kept their perishable foods cool in the summertime. In the winter, they would cut blocks of ice from down in the East Fork and bring it up here, put it in the dairy house and pack it with straw. And that was Pioneer Refrigeration. And then next to the dairy house, he had a 15-foot dug well that was rather unusual at that point in time. Usually you would have to go to a spring or the river or wherever to get your water, but he had a, a well dug and it still holds water yet today. Hundreds of thousands of acres were bought and sold in the dairy, in the, well, first perhaps in the dairy house and then in the land office. Uh -huh. And um, the records show that at one point in time, over 200,000 acres of land were sold in a single day. In 1801, Lytle actually moved his family here, and they resided here till 1808 when he bought some land in Cincinnati and built his home in an area known as Lytle Park now. Well, it sounds like Mr. William Lytle was quite an accomplished gentleman. He certainly was. He was a jack of all trades. He was a Renaissance man. His official final title was Major General. Oh and he was considered the first landed millionaire in the West. Back when a million dollars was really a million dollars. <laughs> True. <laughs> the list of his many accomplishments included his skills as a frontiersman, a surveyor, first postmaster of Claremont County, first clerk of courts, of Claremont County uh -huh. Courts, director of the Miami Trading Company, first president of the Cincinnati Humane Society, founder and first president of the University of Cincinnati, which he also gave a lot of money to, major general of the Southern Ohio District of the War of 1812. 
He was appointed Surveyor General of Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan by his close personal friend, President Andrew Jackson. And we are told that he was a member of President Jackson's kitchen cabinet. Mm -hmm. General William Lytle passed from this life in 1831 and is buried at Spring Grove Cemetery in Cincinnati. Well, I understand that Williamsburg had its bicentennial celebration in 1996. That's correct. In 96, a group of people were thinking about this property and its value historically to the community. And the following year, they decided to purchase the property in order to preserve and preserve the history and restore the dairy house. In 1999, the restored dairy house was dedicated and placed on the National Register of Historic Places, uh -huh. and that was in May of 2001. It is the oldest historic structure still standing in Claremont County. The dairy house? Correct. Uh -huh. And shortly thereafter, the museum was established and dedicated to the memory of William Lytle and to the promotion and preservation of local history. The museum is open to visitors free of charge and it ma maintains displays of historical value, uh, items and photos associated with historic Williamsburg and its citizens. This is a very impressive museum here. Tell me some more about it. Thank you. The museum has both the Harmony Hill Association and the Claremont County Historical Society housed here. Uh -huh. In our portion of the museum, we have a statue of a Native American Shawnee Indian who actually belongs to the Grassy Run Association, and we grant him free rent in the corner <laughs> of the museum. And straight across from him, we have a statue of Major General William Lytle, and it looks as if it was made of metal, but it's actually carved of wood by one of our residents in Williamsburg, and that's Tim oh. Reynolds. Uh -huh and he finished it so that it would look like a bronze statue. Um, the Claremont County Historical Society has a lot of records and some things on display also in their portion of, of our museum. A lot of photographs of uh, as far back as possible. Correct, a lot of photographs and a lot of documentation, some old newspapers in the, we have stored in the basement that people can refer to also. Oh my. And We've recently built a carriage house that will house bigger display things and also afford area big enough for people to have meetings and, and uh, groups to come together there. So the public can use the carriage house for Correct. things they want to do. Correct. Do you have special events for students or? We do. We have a Pioneer Day every year in which the third graders from the elementary building come over and they experience some of the chores and toys of the Pioneer children. Um, we have eight stations set up that they can visit and included in those stations are being able to card wool and seeing how to spin wool and how to weave also on a barn loom that we have in the carriage house. I understand there's a big birthday party every year. We celebrate Major General William Lytle's birthday every late summer, early fall. Um, we have music, we have ice cream and cake and punch and tours of the museum, of course. Uh -huh. so that's a, our, one of our signature events. Absolutely. We, I understand there's a special dedication of today's interview. There is. We dedicate this video history of Harmony Hill in memory of Margaret Marty McVeigh, founding member of the Williamsburg Harmony Hill Association Incorporated. That's very nice. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today for another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. We're here with Julia Hess. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Jerry. Of the Harmony Hill Museum. And remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. Bye now. Bye.